Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? My name is Mr. Pitts, and I have the privilege of speaking to you all today um, in your chapel service. Uh, it's a blessing to be here. Um, I wish um, I had the opportunity to, to, to uh, stand in front of you, but with the coronavirus, this is the best way uh, in order for us to do this. And so either way, we are still blessed to have technology to do this. And so I just thank God for it. Uh, let's pray real quick and then we'll get started. Uh, gracious Lord, bless this time that we have together as we just get into your word. I pray that um, we glorify you, Father, um, at the end of all of this. I thank you for um, your teachings. Thank you for your guidance. Uh, give me the strength, Father God, uh, to get um, to not just go through the word, Father God, but to make sure that uh, what I'm saying is clear and uh, will allow all of us to grow closer to you. And we ask all these things in your son, Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Okay, so... Let's get started. Um, first off, just introduce myself. As I told you, I'm Mr. Pitts, the ninth grade Bible teacher. Um, some of you have probably visited my classroom uh, for your shadow days, you eighth graders. Um, I will see you eighth graders, soon to be ninth graders next year. So get used to this face because you'll be seeing that. And used to a lot of all these little little fun people that I hang out with called my, uh, my well, they're not my friends. That's just weird, right? But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. I just, you know, I love Marvel, and so hopefully um, you like Marvel too. And if you don't, that's cool, but um, I'm just excited to have you in my classroom next year just to get to know you and everything like that. So let's get started. So um, today, I have the privilege of preaching to you uh, through the book of John. And so we're going to read, we're gonna read John 15, 1 through 11. And so this passage is basically the title of it is called The Vine and the Branches. And some of you probably have heard this before. Probably have heard your preachers um, at your churches speak about it or you've talked about it in class or you've read it. Uh, and it's, a, it's an interesting, interesting uh, passage from Christ allowing us to understand who we are and who we are with him and what our purpose is. And so the journey that I'm going to, we're going to take today through it I, I, the goal is, I hope, is that we, that we um, come to find out who we are in Christ and how to better um, be fruitful in our daily lives, bringing others to his kingdom. Okay, so let's read. Um, I'm in the ESV, so this is John 15, and it says the following. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my word, words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so prove, so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abided in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Mm. Amen. Okay, so um, now that we've read, I'm, well, the goal is to kind of break this down and kind of understand what Jesus is saying. Um, a lot of, a lot of re repeated phrases such as abide, and things like that. So we're going to understand what that means. But first, we have to go through, have three main points. Now, I always like to do three main points. Sometimes it's seven or whatever, but but I, but I believe a good message should have three main points. And so what are you trying to say, Jesus, here? What are, what are you talking about? Clarify this, this whole thing so that we can understand what it means to be a disciple of Christ, because that is one of the goals he's, he wants us to be as his disciples. So um, let's look at the first point. First thing, we have the characters. Uh, let's see. We have Jesus is the vine. Um, and so he's presenting himself as the vine. He says the vine dresser. 
is the father. Um, he and he has um, he takes care of the vine. He takes care of the, the branches. He he's the one who does the particular actions to each each sort of uh, you know branch. And that's the next one of our next characters, if you will, is the two types of branches. We have two here. We have the we have the uh, the one that bears fruit and the one that does not bear fruit. And so there's this there's this um, Jesus' lesson here to the people who are around his disciples and other ones who are listening. Um, there are two types of two types of people or branches and equals people here. You know those who who who, who are who are a part of me. Uh, oh, excuse me. Those who bear fruit and then those who do not. Um, it's interesting because when I used to read this verse, I always thought as the 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 vine or the branch that did not produce any fruit were those who did, have never heard the word of God at all. But it's interesting because the two branches, two types of branches are attached to the vine. Interesting. They're attached to the vine. The only problem is, is that one of them does not, one of them, that's this one up here, apparently, does not produce fruit while this one does. And so Jesus is, is already distinctly, you know, setting apart these two types of branches that are being being uh, seen here. And so here we go. So interesting. He's, he, he's showing us there's a difference between the two. All right. So let's talk about the, the next topic is um, these two branches, the results. All right. So as you as you read in, in those verses, Jesus says that, that that there are two types of branches, one that bears fruit and one that does not. And the, the vine dresser is involved in all this and, and how he handles each of the branches. So first off, um, the fruitless branch, um, it does not bear any fruit. It's fruitless, uh, bearing branches uh, necessarily, because a, a branch is supposed to bear fruit. But according to this, it has no purpose. Um, it's attached to the vine, but it's not producing anything, not doing what it's made to do. Um, that very thing is to produce, well, in this case, because Jesus is referring to a, a grapefruit, a grapefruit, a grapevine, the, the vine or the branch is supposed to produce grapes, but it's not doing that. So um, what does the vine dresser do? It cuts it off. In verse two, it says the vine dresser cuts it off. It cuts off the actual dead branch. And then it falls and it withers, dries up. Then the vine dresser gathers it up and throws it into the fire. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Throws it into the fire. So 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 this type of branch or person does not do anything that this purpose in and grace is shown but eventually uh, the vine or the branch must be cut off. Now you have this the second one is the fruitful branch and this branch is designed to to do what it's it's doing what it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to do. It's designed, it's doing what it's designed to do, and that's producing fruit. Um, now, there is a cutting also with this branch, but it's called pruning. And if you know anything about pruning, pruning um, is a method that most gardeners do. If you see your mom out there gardening or your dad, you know, we're not sexist here, you know, and they're out there gardening, um, or if you see anybody trimming the hedges, usually you trim the hedges, you do those particular things because you want to cause growth. Um, when, when, when you're dealing with a, with a plant that has a particular vine and, and it produces a particular fruit like, like grapes or, or um, tomatoes, you, you would cut off or you would cut at certain parts of the branch so that there could, it, it, the, the branch would be able to produce better fruit and grow, 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 yeah, produce better fruit and grow. <laughs> I'm not a botanist, but you know what I mean. That, 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 so pruning is necessary for growth in life. And so this, this particular branch here that Jesus is talking about, this person, um, he also, they also are being cut, but they are being pruned. Now you say, well, um, the, does pruning mean God's trying to cut us off too? No. Cutting in this sense, or pruning in this sense, is a, is a, is a, is a thing of, ch of challenges or trials. Uh, for example, we're all going through a great trial right now. Corona. We're stuck at home, you know? We're not in the classroom, we're not seeing our friends, we can't travel like we want to. Um, praise God, we can still go outside, unlike other states, but, you know, we're going through a trial. 
Uh, and what trials are all the process of building our faith and making our faith grow. So pruning is not a bad thing for a Christian. It's it's a training. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a means of making our faith grow in God. So when Jesus is saying, "Hey, this type of fruit, this type of branch, will grow," because but but it will be pruned. You will go through things. Um, and then it says it produces um, fruit. And so, and so because of the pruning, because of, of it being a, a fruitful vine, that's doing what it's supposed to do, it produces fruit. And so what type of fruit? Fruits of the spirit or spiritual fruits. And here's a cool, here's a cool thing about it. And I, all you always wonder, I always get questions from my students, like, Mr. Pitts, what does it mean about fruit? Because, you know, of course, we, we think of, when we think of fruit, we automatically, in my mind, I'm thinking of grapes, apples, oranges, you know, watermelon, come on. But... It's not talking about, you know, fruit. It's talking about the spiritual fruits. All those fruits that are spoken of in Galatians are what we need to be bearing. And I put here, we're fruit bearers, not pickers. Uh, I saw, I read a message the other day. I heard a message the other day from John Piper. Beautiful message about what it means to be a fruit, a fruit bearer rather than a picker. A picker is one who goes around and takes and adds to their collection. You can't do that with the fruits of the spirit. You can't go and say, well, I'm gonna have joy today. I'm gonna take some patience right here. And, and then if there's a shortage on, on um, you, you know, uh, goodness, then I won't get it that day. No, 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 no. We, we're not fruit pickers, we're fruit bearers. We are supposed to, as, as, as the good branches, as disciples, as we'll talk about in a second, as, as ones who bear God's fruit, we are, we are, we are bearing those fruits. We are having. We are humbly allowing ourselves to, to have the, each one of those fruits of the Spirit in our lives daily, so that the world can see that, and they can come and be like, you know what? They got something different. It, we're bearing fruits to the world, giving giving our full selves to them, as Christ gave His full self to us. That's what that means. That's exactly what that means. So we're supposed to be fruit bearers now. The last part, one thing that we need to do that sets us apart from w w whether you are a, a branch that doesn't produce fruit or a, a branch that does produce fruit, and that is what Jesus keeps repeating over and over again, and that is abide. What does it mean to abide? Um, abide means to remain, to remain, stay in place, or continue to exist. You know, you're there. Um, for example, we're remaining home. Stay at home. Stay, it's your shelter in. That's what you know, the president and our governor and all that. If you don't have to go outside, remain at home. Abide at home. Stay there. Exist in that area. So Jesus is saying sort of like that, but he's saying those who are part of me will abide with me and I will abide in you. Like, and that's what he's saying. Abide in me and I will abide in you. You can see that. There we go. Focus on there. Abide in me and I'll abide in you. Like the, the point is, is that, is, is that if you choose to abide in me and allow me to be in your life allowing allowing the nutrients if you will i'm going back to divine the nutrients or the or my spirit to move through you so you can produce these fruits you will you will remain you won't you won't be cut off you don't have to worry about that just daily commit to abide in me and i will abide in you um abiding in him and his word um, is 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 doing whatever and he will provide he, he says whatever if you if you abide in me whatever you ask i will provide no 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 matter what it is now this is not being selfish it's not saying that you know you can ask for a lamborghini or a car or something like that that's not what you I mean which which if you need it so be it god's gonna provide but it's not a want it's he, he's saying in throughout your ministry throughout your life um when trials come Ask me, and I will give you strength. You can't do this apart from me. Apart from me, when trials come, you will fall. You will wither away like the branch who doesn't bear fruit. You will just be there, and then eventually be cut off. And no, no, no. He's saying no. If you if you're gonna if you're gonna abide in me, ask me, and I'll give you I'll give you what you need. Hands down. Hands down. So, um, and through all this. The point of all this is not for us to be glorified, but for God to be glorified. God is to be glorified through, through all of this. Um, and we are his disciples. That's what it means to be a disciple. A disciple is one who follows his teacher. 
remaining with them, abiding with them, going through um, trials with them. Because I think people get it wrong. We, I think we think that Jesus and God are up there with their arms folded and don't really care about us and, and just watching us. Like we're going through all this corona stuff and they're just watching and laughing. But the thing is, is that our God is not like that. Our God is a God who goes through, goes through things with us. Mm. He, 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 he bears our burdens and he goes through the trials with us. As a matter of fact, I always like to think that God is carrying me through this. As a, as a vine supports his branches, that's what Jesus is doing for us. So, here's the thing, though. It's interesting that Jesus gives us this passage and, and, and presents all these different, uh, these two different choices we have, basically. He presents who Jesus, who he is, who God is, and then he pre presents who we, who we, who we are, who, who, the, who we are or who we could be. Like, in other words, he's given us a choice here. And so what do you choose? Are you a, are you a, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Because here's the thing. I believe people do come to Christ, um, and maybe you have at one point, and you believed in your heart, but because of things that have gone on in your life, you kind of don't believe as you used to. And, and because of that, you've kind of gotten stubborn and not been bearing the fruits of the spirit not been showing love to your parents to your to your siblings not being patient with them not not being good to them not long suffering not, or, or, or always complaining not doing the very things that 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 the fruits of the spirit um are and that and that's been hard that's been hard and i'm and i'm not saying that if you aren't bearing the fruits at this moment god's going to cut you off but eventually, if 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 you're just taking up the the, the 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 vine's nutrients, or excuse me, or God's goodness, and but you but you've cut off the the very purpose of what you are here to do, and that is to bear fruit, bear the fruits of the spirit to bring others to God, then what is your purpose? Why are you why are you doing this? You know, you know, it's like the, my pastor always said. Just because, you know, you know, when it comes to being a Christian, people say they're Christians all the time. But are they? You know, if I park myself, my pastor just said this, he said, if I park myself in a garage, am I automatically a car? No. It's, it's more than that. It's more than just going to church on Sunday. It's more than just going and reading your Bible, uh, which you're supposed to do. We, it's good fellowship, but it's more than just going to a Christian school and being like, I'm a Christian. No, do you have a relationship with Christ? And so that's my the other choice is, are you a believer? And if you are, if you are, then then you then then continue to abide in Him. You have the choice. You can remain not producing fruit, or you or produce fruit and abide in Me. This is how you produce fruit: is when you abide, when you rest, when you remain with Me. Here's the cool thing: Jesus remains in us when we let when we allow Him to do that. And he doesn't do it by force. He's a, he's a gentleman. His hand is reached out and saying, come on. Abide with me. So, um, hopefully this, this, this message has, has inspired you to follow Christ. Um, please, if you have any, if you want to talk about this with family or things like that, reach out to someone. Reach out to your teacher. Um, you could even contact me and we could talk about it, but Make the choice today. Choose today. Choose to be a disciple who produces fruit. Amen and amen. Thank y'all for having me and have a wonderful day.